Hi. My name is Jillian, and I was... Wow. No, I, I know it's just a word. I can say it. I can admit it when I'm... Hi. My name is Jillian, and I was... I almost threw up in my mouth a little bit. I... <sighs> okay. Feeling like I should. I'm all good. I'm all good. So first up is dandruff. Now, I have had dandruff since I was a preteen. One day, I went to the shop to go get my hair relaxed, and the person who did my hair was like, oh, you didn't scratch your scalp? Okay, so I don't need to base your scalp with anything. There was no oil, there was no whatever they use when they base your scalp when you get a relaxer. They did not do that. And ever since then, I have had dandruff. And I always blamed it on that until I figured out how to stop my dandruff. I had to stop putting heavy oils on my scalp. And I also learned that the oil that your scalp produces on its own, which is sebum, is more than enough to moisturize your scalp. I knew that, but I forgot, and I wasn't thinking about it, and I was putting all this extra nonsense on my scalp, causing the dandruff. Now, there are some people who have a low production of sebum that is possible, and if that's the case, then definitely reach for some lighter oils. Jojoba oil, you can use hemp seed oil, or grapeseed oil, not this heavy stuff that I thought that I needed that was actually causing me dandruff and build up. And I only know that that was causing the dandruff because I no longer do that and I don't have dandruff. It's been about a month since I've stopped putting heavy oils on my scalp and I don't have any dandruff. It's been wonderful. It's not snowing anymore. So speaking of oils, so let's just say that I owe every oil an apology. Every, every single one of them. Why? Because I swore that oils just didn't penetrate my hair when really I was just using the wrong ones. I need oils that are able to penetrate the hair strand. Their molecular structure is so small that they can still slip through cuticles. Not these heavy oils whose molecular structures are too big. That's why they sit on top of my hair, unless I add heat, but you know, that's a whole nother thing. So like I mentioned before, I have been using grapeseed oil actually on the shaft of my hair and it has been working just fine. It doesn't necessarily sit on top of my hair. My hair looks a little more shiny. Hopefully y'all can tell, uh, but I can tell in the mirror. And I am coming back to oils. Can't believe I'm saying this, but I am coming back to oils. I don't know who I am anymore. Yeah, I used to think flat irons were the devil. I did. I really, I really did. I thought they were the devil. Not knowing how to use them properly is really the problem. First and foremost, you gotta make sure that the heat is not too high, but also you have to use a heat protectant, make sure you use the right leave-in, uh, just to make sure your hair is fully dried before you use a flat iron. I'm not doing that myself at home. I'm going to a professional for that. So I say go to a professional. I'm not taking the chance with my hair. I don't trust myself yet, but I've learned that flat irons are not the devil. The the improper use of them is. <sighs> so, my beloved twist outs, they're not enough. Yeah, I know. What do I mean by that? They're not enough in terms of stretch style. So remember I talked about sebum way back, you know, before like, like 30 seconds ago? <laughs> I talked about sebum and the way that sebum works is it like it wants to travel down your hair shaft to keep your hair coated, moisturized and all that good stuff. But with our curly, kinky hair, it's difficult for the sebum to follow this structure. It's easier for the sebum to follow this structure, right? So straighter hair, the sebum is able to coat it easier. It's just why people with straighter hair, you know, in other cultures wash their hair every day because their hair gets coated with more sebum because it can travel down a hair shaft. <sighs> okay, I'm out of breath. So I've learned that wearing my twist outs, the sebum really can't travel down the hair very well. Currently, I'm experimenting with different ways to help the sebum travel down my hair, and it is not wearing this twist out. What I have been doing is on wash day, I've been using my Revlar, which I call a vacuum cleaner, but it's not a vacuum cleaner, but it looks like one. First of all, this thing is called a Revere, and it's not called a Rev... Y'all just pray for me. 
I've been doing that so my hair is not bone straight, but it's straight enough to where I can comb through it almost every day. I can work the sebum that's in my scalp and then try to work it down the length of my hair. And I've been also using my grapeseed oil just to keep my hair coated and moisturized. I've been experimenting with that for a while. And then what I'll do is when I want to wear a twist out, I will twist up my hair using mousse. That will set within a half hour and then boom, I got this style. So I'll wear this for maybe like two days out of the week and then the rest of the week, I just wear it straight, but not, it's not straight, but it's straight enough to where I can comb through it without destroying my styles. But that's an experiment. So like I always say, don't take this stuff and be like, well, Jillian said I need to do this. Nope, I'm just, this is my experiment. This is what I'm doing with me. So full disclaimer, this is my hair. This is what's working for me because it's always somebody. I love y'all so much, but it's always somebody. Oh, this one broke my heart, y'all. Apparently, heavy butters and creams have just been too heavy for my hair. I've noticed that now that I've been using mousses and foams and stuff, my hair kind of flows a little more freely. But when I was using like the butters and, and you know, the creams that I love, my hair was just too weighed down. But I think I'm not, I, I'm probably not gonna throw them out just because I can use them on my skin and all that great stuff. Uh, but I think I'm still gonna use them on my ends, ends of my hair just to give them the extra protection that they need. But that one was a tough blow. Cause I love me some mango butter and Hurt. You know, right, right in here. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. This one. Boy, this, I, I'm, I'm just gonna say it. This one's embarrassing. So, I have been dealing with this stupid, ridiculous disorder called PCOS. It's Never mind, it's stupid and it's gonna go away soon because I'm so disrespectful about it, but whatever. And it kind of caused my body to go a little haywire. I have since figured out a way to keep it under control and everything has gone back to normal except for my hair, right? But I was just like, I didn't change anything. I didn't do anything different. All my products are the same, but my hair is not bouncing back. My body bounced back, but not my hair. It must be the PCOS. Excuse me, excuse me. I think, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that I have identified something very silly that I have been doing. And y'all know I made a whole video about it. So hopefully there's a video right here. If I got my life together, it's here. Oh, I hope it's here. Anyway, check it out. I made the silliest mistake I have ever made with my natural hair and it cost me damn near $1,300. So yeah, pray for me. Check it out.